Welcome to the Blooming League of Original Podcast. Welcome to the inaugural episode of And the EGOT Goes To, a breakdown and predictions podcast for the major U.S.-based award shows. Today we start our first season with a nine-episode miniseries on the 2022-2023 Tony Awards. I'm your host, Spencer, and with me is our panel. I'm Kate Reinking. I am a avid theater fan and theater is life on TikTok. I'm Ashley Hufford. I'm on TikTok and Instagram, and I also see a lot of theater. <laughs> uh, I'm currently working my... Well, I finished all the musicals, and I'm working through all the plays. So, uh, very excited about this season. I am J.T. Tranberg. I am also an avid theater goer. So, I am at J.T. Does NYC on all social media. I am about a... Th- third of the way through this season i would say including shows that are closed already um uh, yeah i think i'm about a third of the way through the 37 shows yeah kate have you also finished the musicals i have not i have camelot left that's the last one Mm -hmm. Um, and then i have five plays yeah i have six plays but i'll have after this weekend i'll have four because i'm seeing life of pie well it's not life of pie in london but i don't count it so i'm seeing life of pie tomorrow and then thanksgiving so before we start let's just go through all of the shows that are eligible we have into the woods 1776 almost famous kimberly akimbo and juliet k-pop a beautiful noise the neil diamond musical some like it hot parade dancing Bad Cinderella, Sweeney Todd, Shucked, Camelot, and New York, New York. So let's get started with our categories. Best revival of a musical, the eligible shows are Into the Woods, Dancing, Sweeney Todd, Parade, Camelot, and 1776. Uh, my picks are Into the Woods, Dancing, Sweeney Todd, and Parade. I could not disagree more because I think Camelot is going to be there. <laughs> I have not seen Camelot yet. Got it. I think dancing is going to be not there and Camelot will be there. Do do we know, does dancing, have have we gotten the official ruling on dancing? So, because there's a chance dancing is not even eligible, right? Dancing is eligible for revival, but it will not be eligible for choreography. Got it. It seems we agree though on Into the Woods, uh, Sweeney Todd and Parade all being there. Yes. I also have not seen Camelot. Here's the thing. I can make an argument for any of these. Into the Woods is the hardest for me because it's been so long. And I feel like Tony voters have a, people in general have a short memory. Uh, but Into the Woods does have the, the biggest, I mean, obviously it's currently on tour. But to me, I think Sweeney feels very much like a kind of standard Sweeney Todd. And and Camelot is very, is like, it's it's a very interesting. I mean, it, it neither one, all four of these, to be 100% honest, don't have any real set to speak of, which I don't love. I wish we had a big set musical, which we do in the original category, but we don't in the revival category. Uh, And so it puts you in this weird situation of like looking at these shows that obviously are very different, but then at the same time are like all four of them are like big orchestra, (laughs) classic musicals with minimal choreography and minimal set. And it's a very strange... (laughs) argue it's a strange to look at so instead we're looking at we're looking at cast we're looking at performances we're looking at direction and camelot are, feels because they did a, a refresh on this book it feels a little more fresh a little more relevant and it's been so long since camelot has done has been on broadway i think it's a little more exciting to people mm-hmm. but again we're talking about nominations here i guess to go from from you just mentioned the book our, our best book of a musical category I think is also very interesting this year. There's a lot of really great books. Um, yes. Are there? Including my favorite. My favorite, Shucked. <laughs> Shucked has my favorite book of the season. Yeah. Um, I, I just went back for the second time and loved it. It's the best. And they made quite a few changes as well. Oh, good. Um, I'm very excited to go tonight. And I was like, yeah, I'm excited to see it again. because you Have you seen it since first preview? No. So I'm not like our good friend, the Broadway optimist, who has seen it 15 times since first preview, which is impressive. That's, that's amazing. But I saw the like the pre-Broadway rehearsal, and then I saw first preview. And so now I'm excited to go again. And then I have tickets. It is my sneaky potential Tony pick, which so I've, I've, I'm all in because I bought my first post-Tony tickets 
I like to gamble on a show and I buy the, for the, the Tuesday after the Tonys because it's my favorite show of the season and I have got shocked. So that is where I'm at. I, I think we could, mm. we could see that come through for best musical. I, I would not that, be surprised. That's what I'm saying. I don't, right now I don't think it has the momentum, but I, I could see it happening. Once it opens next week and we see reviews start to come out, I think that that momentum will uh, solidify. Um, so best book of a musical, I had put... Kimberly Akimbo and Juliet, Some Like It Hot, Camelot is eligible, and I love Aaron Sorkin, so I put it there and shucked. I agree 100%. Those are my five Those nominations. Also my five. <laughs> yeah, yeah, same. So we're, we're all in it. We're all in agreement. I could, I could see, I mean, because again, New York, New York is doing so many changes. I could see a world in which they sneak in there. But as of first pre, as of like this week, I don't think so. But again, they have another like two weeks, and apparently they're making like giant major changes every night. So <laughs> next time, for me, New York, New York, I could see squeezing into some other categories that I wouldn't have put them based off of what we saw at the preview. I don't think they can change the book enough for it to get that fifth slot for me. But who knows? Yeah, and then also, what do they what do they take out of that those options? Like what? What would New York, New York replace? I mean, maybe and Juliet. I would say and Juliet, Some Like It Hot, and New York, New York are the three that yeah. could kind of rotate in there for me. Right now, I think and Juliet and Some Like It Hot are are the there are my picks. But that and I and I kind of see what Kate's saying in terms of I don't think it could change enough for it to actually uh, sneak in there. But just putting that on the radar. We're now on one of the most interesting categories this year: orchestration. Do you think that that might be where seventy seventeen seventy six? Uh, jumps in. I agree. That's a, that's the only category I have it in. Also, I, it's also the only category. I think, yes, it's the only category I had it in. And I think that that's also where Bad Cinderella could... Um, this is this is not where I put my Bad Cindy nom in orchestrations, no. but, I, you know, I wouldn't be mad if I got an orchestrations nomination. No, I don't think it would win orchestrations. Um, I think it's either 1776 or Some Like It Hot because um, those Some Like It Hot orchestrations are hot unintended yeah uh, for for the other orchestration nominations i have new york new york in there i think that's kind of a shoe in um and juliet and uh shucked was my my fifth surprise pick between... i'm a big fan of shucked orchestrations i was blown away that they were getting the sound they were from just five musicians and how they've orchestrated those five parts is really interesting right love a good banjo and mandolin yeah, I have. I uh, Shuck, Shuck was my fifth as well. <laughs> I did. I had Kimberly in there. I also had Kimberly in there. I think I'm just also just. I love their their cast recording so much, and I think their cast recording is like one of the best mixed cast recordings I've like ever heard. And I think that has blinded me a little bit. I need to go back to Kimberly. I haven't seen it in a couple months. And speaking of mix, let's go ahead and talk about sound design of a musical. <laughs> um, also, we've had some fantastic sound designs this season. Um, Into the Woods being one of my favorites. It's some of the clearest lyrics I've ever heard in a theater um, are, are Into the Woods. And so I put... That's my number one. And it's that's so hard with Sondheim. That is a so important and so hard because there's so many words. <laughs> yes. He does not agree. <laughs> uh, yeah. no, actually, now that I think about it, I'm like, oh, you know what? You're not wrong. I don't have Into the Woods on my list at all, but you're not wrong. I feel like you have to have some like it hot in there because of that fucking tap. Like to me, the way that they're able to mix that tap in with yeah. that's why I feel like I, the tap mixed in, I find so brilliant and it never overpowers. Like it sounds so good. And it's you're, when you're singing and tap dancing at the same time, and then you're able to hear all of it. Like I need to revisit some like it hot. I have not seen it since I think I saw a second preview of that. I don't know why I've been seeing so many second previews. Like I've seen like six second previews this season. Um, but yeah, that cast recording, which just came out, it has been on heavy rotation. Yeah. Uh, this may be controversial, but this is where I put K-pop. So I have for sound design, I have K-pop dancing, uh, New York, New York, also almost famous. And then some like it hot. I think putting dancing in there is cheating because they don't have to mix any vocals. They do for like really. two like, seconds. Not really. I don't remember Almost Famous. I think it was just so bad that I've tried to forget it. There was a, it was a lot. I don't know if it was bad, but it was a lot. I saw that with you, Kate, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, 
a lot. I enjoyed it. It was it was just a lot, but I definitely can see where sound design plays a huge, huge, huge part, especially in those like not specifically in biomusicals, but any sort of show that has lots of uh, concert scenes or um concert like performances um sound design comes in very strongly because that's different than um than designing or mixing uh, a, a ballad and, and that argument beautiful you know? noise and could also be in the discussion there yeah because i do i do think well i was just going to bring up beautiful noise because none of us have mentioned it yet uh, it's coming i have it oh okay I I assume we all have at least one nomination for it for Will Swenson in the lead actor category. I have two. I also have two. I also have two. Best choreography. Th- that that is where I have a beautiful noise. I think what the ensemble does in a beautiful noise is unbelievable and there's no ensemble category and that's where I'm putting them. <laughs> That's the like, <laughs> but the ensemble is so good, and we don't have an ensemble category, so that's where they go for me. That's fair. Oh. I don't have them there, but that's fair. Anyone have any controversial picks for for best choreography? That's why I put K-pop too. My choreography categories is filled with bad bad options. <laughs> I have Bad Cinderella, uh, Kimberly Akimba, Almost Famous, and Juliet. The ice skating, just the ice skating. Is it choreography or is it direction? That's what I consider it choreo. It's direction. I would put it in direction. Um, but I can yeah. double check for y'all. I how do you not have some like it hot? That was the last one. How is, oh, okay. I was like, how is some like a hot not winning? Like <laughs> Because that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm like for me, I didn't really care what was in there because I was like, it's going to sound like it hot. So it's my uh, chase scene at the end of Sound Like It Hot this, is the, one yeah. of the coolest things I've ever... Yeah. The second I saw it, I was like, well, there is our choreography. It reminds me of the circus of your mind in Finding Neverland. Anyone have anything controversial here? I have Parade, Camelot, Sound Like It Hot, and Juliet, Kimberly, Kimbo. I have Sweeney Todd over and Juliet. I have Kimberly Sweeney, Sound Like It Hot, Parade Camelot. I just wrote Sound Like It Hot in capital letters and moved on. I have Shucked over and Juliet. Oh, Shucked would be really fun, actually. I also think that depending on how it does in previews, this is the category that I think Susan Stroman could squeeze in. I agree. Um, and so I have New York, New York over Parade. Because I think that Susan Stroman can do a lot better things than add a swing for no reason. Uh, <laughs> there is somebody coming from the ceiling at one point, but... <laughs> I went to first preview and nobody came from the ceiling. So I still don't know if I believe that that happened. Didn't you find that out at that meetup? <laughs> yes. And I was like, I thought he was joking. I think New York, New York is going to take this one. It is like one of the most beautifully lit shows I've ever seen. It's so, it's so pretty. Agreed. That umbrella scene alone i was like oh there 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 it goes <laughs> don't either on the the train like that's unbelievable in the first three seconds of the show you're like wow okay they make you feel like you're on a subway it literally after the, at the intermission of new york new york my friend nicole was like i am tired from running all up and down the entire island of manhattan um i have and juliet parade Bad cinderella a beautiful noise and new york i new have york. none of those except for new york new york uh, so for lighting, I have New York, New York, A Beautiful Noise, Dancing, Shucked, and K-pop. That is also where I have dancing. I have K-pop, Shucked, New York, New York, Dancing, and Angeliette. What'll be interesting mm-hmm. will be if the nominators remember K-pop enough to give it all the nominations that we are. I definitely think yeah. we'll see it I, yes. somewhere. It should but, be in choreography. I don't know if it'll if again you're but like if it's getting it one, it should be choreography. Yeah. But I agree. It had an LED floor. If it doesn't get lighting, I'm going to be so sad. <laughs> it had wind machines. Yeah. And I don't know what category that fits into, but that should I get something. And they were so um, loud, <laughs> those wind machines. I sat front row for that show and she was singing that song and like the wind machines were blowing and I couldn't hear anything she was saying. Not a word. <laughs> it was just... <laughs> Well, they just released the the single for that song, so you can hear it now. <laughs> well, so then let's go ahead to scenic design. New York, New York. Here you go. No, 
New York, New York. Yeah, I have New York, New York, Shucked, Sound Like It Hot, Kimberly. And then right now for the fifth spot, I actually did put Sweeney Todd in there because I do think that like effect was cool. I Again, I wanted more. I want, you know, I always want more, but I do think that is really cool. So I still haven't seen New York, New York, and I love Beowulf for its sets. He's one of my favorite set designers. I can't explain. Like, you see lift any anything in New York City, you, you get the whole city, all the city is there. There are scenic design pieces that are on stage for two seconds. And then they just... It's it's absolutely... I'm, I'm like, it is a billion dollar musical. They spent on one, like, on like three scenic choices. <laughs> That's the only one that matters. Um, but I also have Sweeney here. And then Kimberly for the, the mini turntable. Uh... I put some like a hot for the train and then uh, shocked because I just find yeah, that so set gorgeous. Well, I also like Kimberly Kimbo because they have the thing with the walls. Like that's kind of yeah. cool. It's kind of nifty. Yeah. yeah I, I, that was one of my uh, favorite things that I saw that I've seen so far this season is that transition uh, that like, I don't know like, what you are like a three piece set where like the, when they're in the house and you have like the living room and you have Kimberly's room, but then you also have like the backyard that we don't see. Um, but still like lots of things come from that area, which is, was really, really cool. Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a small set, but I do think it's one of the more creative ones that we have this season. Yeah. Yeah. Sets are kind of boring this year. I'm bummed. Yeah. Cause that's my favorite category. And now we have costume design of a musical. I have Angeliet, Some Like It Hot, Camelot, New York, New York. And then I actually put Sweeney in there for the final one, just for Annalise Wiggs alone. That's fair. I also snuck K-pop in here too. <laughs> Look at Kate. Kate is the biggest K-pop stand <laughs> on the internet. <laughs> so barely. That's so funny. Um, I also put Kimberly and Kimbo in here. I didn't have any of the revivals, but I could see, I could see, I mean, I haven't seen Camelot yet, so. It's, it's mostly for the one dress that, there's this one dress that Philippa C wears where she looks like an angel goddess. And I was like, everyone does it. She deserves it for the costumes. Like she looks That's fair. so good in this show. So this, this is um, a one of two categories where I have bad Cindy. I have it in here too. Ah, I just hate, I hate yeah. her costume so much. And I'm aware that like everyone else's costumes are so beautiful. Like, but the, ugliness of that cinderella costume i'm like you don't deserve it look so so i was watching someone's tiktok someone was like um it should be called bad robin hood <laughs> she looks like robin hood. <laughs> that was so funny but like the dresses like the like the carolee and the grace dresses are unbelievable yeah like so beautiful yeah. so it wouldn't i mean that wouldn't shock yes. me if they snuck in there i just like i really just can't get over her 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 outfit yeah and and that terrible and that terrible dress the like yeah. big reveal dress that's not ex- yeah. interesting at all yeah and then like the add-on skirt for no reason best original score i have kimberly some like it hot i think bad cindy might sneak in here i think just because the fact that it's him. yeah if if uh, bad cindy gets a nom it'll be solely because they just want to nominate andrew Lloyd Webber. yeah if it's five then i would put then i would put it and then Shuck, yeah, yeah, is will get a nom here. I what I had was Kimberly Shuck, New York, New York. So I'm like it hot. I didn't think about the fact that New York, New York might not be eligible. In which case, and then I have now I'll have Bad Cindy in as my fifth spot. I think Shuck has a very good chance of taking this, which makes me very happy. Yeah, I think it'll be. I mean, I don't know. All th- all th- the three top ones I think are Kimberly Shuck and Some Like It Hot. Mm-hmm. But yeah. yeah, yeah, and I think any of them. Could take I do too. This. I agree. I, I don't think Bad Cinderella will win it, but I think that it'll get a nomination here just because it's now time for the acting categories. Actors, baby. It's time. All right. <laughs> the least interesting category in all of the Tony Awards this year, featured actor in a musical. I agree. I couldn't even think of five. I could think of five. Our five are very different. I have Gavin Creel, Stephen Boyer, Stark Sands, Jordan Dobson and Gray Hansen. The Jordan Dobson is one is wild to me, but I enjoy it. I also put Jordan Dobson because I didn't like anybody else. See, I think Alex Joseph Grayson is going to get in there for parade. Oh, you're so right. I agree. Like I think, and, and I, I actually have Gayton. I have Gayton in there for the fifth spot for Sweeney Todd. I think he is so good. So good. So charming. Great voice. Like, 
I think he's the second best person in Sweeney Todd after Emily Asher. Hot take. <laughs> Not a hot take to me, baby. Do we think uh, Gavin Creel will get, will sneak in there? I have Gavin Creel sneaking in a nomination because the category is so weak. But also Gavin Creel was incredible in that. And I don't have Steven in there, but I have Justin Cooley in there. I also have Justin Cooley. I have Justin Cooley. Yeah. Possibly taken the whole thing. I think as well. Um, and then my fifth one though is um, Jordan Donica from Camelot. I think he has a, a decent chance. He's so good. <laughs> so have we have we landed that Alex is going for actress? Probably. That's what it sounds like, but not confirmed. If if Alex decides as, not to go for actress, that changes the entire category because Alex will win. Well, for me with with Alex in. Don't hate me. I have Justin Cooley, Gavin Creel, uh, Jordan Donica, Alex Newell, and Joshua Henry. I mean, I love jo- I love Joshua Henry. I don't. I think his part's too small. But mm. I'm like, I'm just I'm a Joshua Henry fan. Just kind of while he's in there. Yeah. No. I mean, I love him. I just I I honestly was pissed that he was it, that small of a role when you have. I was like, why is he not the Baker Tony? Because like, I actually don't have shocked other than Alex. I don't have shocked in any of the categories, even though I think their cast is incredible. But I feel like everyone to me comes across. It's like. Even Caroline to me is like fairly even to everybody else. And I like wish we could just like honor the entire cast as a whole, as opposed to have to like. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, Bo, Bo from Shuck might get a nomination. He's also wonderful. Um, Andrew. Um, I, I didn't know yes. where he would qualify. So if they put him in leading, I don't think he gets a nom. If they push him to supporting or featured, then I, I think he has a really good chance of getting nominated. Hey there, listeners. Spencer here. While the panel are off having a short intermission, I thought you might like to hear about Bloop Network's other show, Thrash and Treasure, the Torture Chamber musical comedy podcast where we torture the world's greatest artists with musicals, comedy, and heavy metal, even Tony Award winners. Here's a quick sneak peek. With Tony Award winner James Monroe. A fun question. When was the last time you jumped in puddles for fun? Never. And let me explain oh why. Oh my God, James. That's I am, I know, I know. Tisk, I, am such, tisk, tisk. I am such a prissy man. Anybody who knows me knows I'm a prissy man. I, uh, <laughs> I wasn't the kid that played in dirt. Uh, fun story. Two stories, very quickly. I was a kid and everybody was playing in sand and it rained. And all the kids were making sand castles. And I was like, I can't do that. I'll get that on my corduroys. <laughs> and the boys, <laughs> the boys teased me. For a whole semester. <laughs> then, flash forward to college. Flash forward to college. I'm driving, <laughs> and I drive up to class, and I'm in a parking lot, and I open my door, and I look down, and there is a puddle of water with a little bit of mud. I close the door, back up the car, and get into a different parking space, not realizing that one of my favorite teachers, my mentor, saw me, and she said, you know, I watched that whole situation. I said, what situation? She goes, you looked out? You looked at the puddle. You looked around to see if anybody was looking. You backed up your car and parked in a completely <laughs> different spot. <laughs> I am so bad. I sw- guys, my wife teases me. Her favorite thing to do is like throw dirt on me and like watch me freak out. <laughs> oh, that's not good. No. She- oh, oh no, it's hilarious. Look, I'm Australian. That's that's <laughs> the way we do. Yeah. If it rains and she's like, I'm like, she goes, must you, what she got in the car, she goes, must you have an umbrella everywhere? I'm like, I have an umbrella in my bag. I have an uh-huh. umbrella in my car. I said, yes. She was like, James, good. It's just water. I'm like, no, it's going to get on me. And I swear. Yeah. <laughs> unless, unless it's romantic and I'm kissing in the rain. Nope. There we go. Your Spider-Man moment. Get your Spider-Man on. It's got to, there's got to be a moment where I know some, you know, sexy's coming out. But if not, nah, <laughs> there is no, sorry, man. There's no puddle. There's no dirt. There's nothing. I am and I'm shocked. so glad you asked me that question. It's yep. so bad. I am so glad too, because this is going out to the world. Hey. It's so bad. You can catch Thrash and Treasure on the Bloop Network, wherever you listen to podcasts. And now back to And the EGOT Goes To. Leading actor in a musical of which I have Will Swenson, Jay Harrison, D. Platt, Josh Groban, and Colton Exact Ryan. list. <laughs> I, have that, I, I have that list, except um, I have uh, Brian Darcy James in there, too. Ah, instead of? I have the exact same five. Uh, 
don't hate me <laughs> and <laughs> instead of Josh Groban. I also haven't seen Sweeney and I just from the people that I have that have seen Sweeney, I just have have heard um this, their opinions. But I, that might change again once I see Sweeney next week. So I again I also I, I think after first preview I would not have put him in there. Got it. Honestly, like Wednesday I can't like I saw it on Wednesday and it, it's a completely different show to me. Like it, overall the same design choices and stuff are obviously the same, but like the whole cast just feels so much tighter. And so much more impressive. And the only thing I liked less was Little Priest because first night they were so crazy and so unhinged. And now they're, they're doing it, but it feels like, to me anyway, it felt like now they know the beat. So when they were like cracking each other up, it's because they like knew when they were supposed to crack each other up. Or like first preview, it felt like they legitimately were like losing their minds. <laughs> like they were like, like Josh Groban was on the ground laughing. And I was like, I think he's actually laughing because Annalie is so nuts in this in this scene um right um i also have um christian burrow in parentheses just because he's christian burrow but that's okay now since you actually since you are the only person who has seen it uh what about andrew burnett well i also just don't i don't think there's space like i don't know who like i think ben platt jay colton and will are basically locks and i guess that fifth spot would be like tentatively but the problem is is that like the reason Sweeney Todd is on Broadway is because Josh Groban was like, I want to play Sweeney Todd on Broadway. And like, that is the, that was what they thought. Like, that was literally the reason. Yeah. yeah. I can, I feel you. I don't think he will. He's, he's good. The thing is Camelot's a weird part. He doesn't really sing. He's a great actor. No. And I, I think Andrew's great. I, I like, but he, from the three of them, he's definitely, and not even that he's the weak, he's not bad. It's just that like, you, you don't leave Camelot and the people you're thinking of is Jordan yeah. and Philippa. And again, I, I also went, I think, for the fourth preview. So there is a chance that things have changed. I mean, I'm going the day after the nominations come out. So <laughs> well, we'll start with leading actress in a musical. Um, I have I have Victoria Clark, Michaela Diamond, but they might end up putting Michaela in featured, which then changes everything. I don't think they can anymore because of the, t- the reviews. I really think that I think that changed that conversation. Because every review was like, this is her show. Yes. And then Philippa Sue, Caroline Innerbickler, I probably butchered that, um, and Annalie Ashford. I have uh, Anna Uzelli in for Caroline. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A- Anna, to me, changed the con. When I saw it, I was like, because I, I mean, I, I'm not like, I was talking, my friend, like my, my friend Michael was like, I could see Anna winning. And I was like, I think that's like, a, like the only way is if Victoria and Annalie completely split the vote. But like, and Anna is so good. So good. I would not be mad if she won. She's that good. Like for me, she's a shoe in nomination at this point. The Victoria Clark slid to third for me. She like Victoria Clark was first. Anna Lee, I think has surpassed her in my opinion, not necessarily in Tony's opinion. And now I think Anna to me is my favorite of the season. Yeah. I, and I love Kimberly. I really, and I love Victoria Clark. And I honestly, any of those five people, I would not be mad at winning. None, like zero of them. If Philippa Sluice supplies all of us in one, I would be like, great. Philippa Sue forever. Like, <laughs> I mean, no, I, Sarah, Sarah almost made my list, but I was like, I don't know who I can replace her with. Like the problem is like this, these five are so stacked. I have Annalie Ashford, Victoria Clark, Patina Miller, Philippa Sue and Michaela Diamond. Lots of into the work. This is almost a category that I could see there being a sixth nomination. Um, this and featured actress that wouldn't surprise me because there's just there's so the actress this year, both featured and leading, is so tight. And I couldn't even, like I said, like I really couldn't tell you who would win. Oh, yeah, no, f- featured actress is the is the category of the season. Like, I would say more than anything else, we, we now are at featured actress, and I believe we all have very different opinions on this. I I don't know who to put in the fifth spot, but I right now have Bonnie Milligan, Betsy Wolf, Carolee Carmelo, and Alex Newell. I have six nominations for this one. I think we're getting six because there's no way. I have Al. I have Allie in there. I put. I got Allie snuck in there. That's my, yeah. <laughs> and I, I have Grace. I have Grace over Carolee personally, but that's also might be my personal biased opinion of thinking Grace McQueen is the greatest of all time. 
I think one of the two of them will get a slot. It, I don't know which one it'll be, but it'll be one of the two of them. I have, so, I have, I have seven. Don't hate me. <laughs> I couldn't make up my mind. I couldn't make up my mind. Yeah. Um. All right. I have Betsy Wolf, Philip Sue, Bonnie Milligan, Philip Sue for Into the Woods, um, Bonnie Milligan, um. Julia Lester, also for Into the Woods, uh, Carolee Camello, Natasha Yvette Williams, and Alex Noel. I think we can all, I mean, again, it'll depend on what Alex ends up doing, but I think we can all agree that Bonnie, Betsy, and Alex will end up there. And then it's those other two to three to four. <laughs> but that could be a wide range. Hi there, listeners. Since the recording of this episode, There has been a statement that Alex Newell has decided to submit themselves into the Best Featured Actor category. In this episode, we state that we assumed that they would be put into the Best Featured Actress category. Now back to the episode. I mean, here's the thing. I don't... Everyone that you put, JT, like, I agree with you. I really think the problem is recency bias, that I think a lot of people have just forgotten about Into the Woods because it was last summer. Like, that's a long time. Because, like, I would have put Saleh Pfeiffer on this list three months ago. And I think Casey could have been a conversation also for leading. I I think that's, the honestly, the main reason that he won't almost won't get nominated this year is because they already know that's coming, and we already know that he's going to be nominated for that, probably. I think we'll have Casey definitely in the conversation next year. And now we are at the Tony Award for Best Musical. I have Kimberly Kimbo and Juliet. Some Like It Hot, Shucked, and New York, New York. That's my exact list. I mean, again, I, I jokingly at the beginning of the season said that New York, New York was going to win be- just based on the fact that it was Candor Ebb, Lima Miranda about the glory of old New York based on a Martin Scorsese movie with Liza Minnelli. Yeah. And I don't necessarily think I'm wrong. Like, I I like legitimately think, I mean, again, and I'm, I'm not even saying it is the best musical of the year, but I'm saying thinking of people that are voting for the in the Tonys, it hits all of those, like, New York is the greatest city in the world. New York is the greatest city in the world. I think for me, it just, it needs to fix some issues and previews, but it's it's doable. Right. And and Candor is 96 years old. Like, that is wild. Um, and I think at the beginning of the season, we were all kind of like, oh, Kimberly Kimbo's award to lose. Um, and I'm not sure that any of us feel that way anymore. I think Kimberly, I will say New York, New York probably has helped Kimberly. I think it'll, I think people, so the Sun Like It Hot, New York, New York are similar. I mean, they're not really, but like similar in theory in terms of like old movie, old movies, adaptations, like old, you know, old timey, whatever. Like, I think that will kind of split some of the vote. Like people that might have voted for Sun Like It Hot would vote for New York, New York. I don't know the best way to put this and it's not going to be as uh, whatever. Um, I think that if uh, New York, New York does take votes not necessarily take like earn votes, but take votes away from some like a hot. It'll be because of who the Tony voters are and the subject matter um, in parts of some like it hot. Um, if you get my drift, I feel like um, I hate to say it. It's 2023, but it's a thing. Um, and this movie is based on something that was sort of a um, a caricature of a of a lifestyle um, when the movie came out. And what was that the the 70s, whatever. Um, uh, so when, yeah, I thought it was the 70s that was set in the 50s, but you're right. It came out in the 50s. Um, yeah, something like that. It's something like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I feel like um, if if New York, New York gets those votes um, from some like it hot, that that is going to be, I think that's a major factor in it, not taking anything away from some like it hot, because I wish that. Uh, the, I the, like I felt so uh, like the feeling I felt when when that the last fifteen minutes of some like it hot I was like this is fantastic I'm obsessed um, but knowing who the Tony voters are knowing the type of uh, demographic that the Tony voters are um, and that Broadway producers are I feel like if some like a hot takes votes away from sorry if New York New York takes votes away from some like a hot that's why and if Kimberly or Kimbo slides in there and is still able to win, that will play a major factor. Well, and I think a show like Shucked too, which is truly the only like truly original musical this season, 
Um, I think it surprised all of us by how much we loved it. And so I think that that same thing might end up happening um, with the Tony voters is they'll go in and if we're talking truly original musicals, we can't, we can't overlook K-pop. That's also true. Well, and what I think is interesting also is like the nominations committee is public. Like that list is here. I'm looking at it on my screen. Um, interesting names on here, some of them, but like it's a small list of people. Um, and so I think that it'll be interesting to see what that group of people um, like um, in terms of it. Cause I think it's a, it's a very eclectic mix. Do we have any more uh, controversial opinions or anything uh, or questions to raise about the nominations for the musical category? I feel like, I mean, obviously we don't know. I'm sure there's a, we're going to be furious once it happens, but something will make me angry, but something. Yeah. I, I'm already upset that K-pop got snubbed. <laughs> Kate's very musical K-pop, not an 18. Not, Kate has K-pop in every category, including best revival. How? I don't know. I'm going to be there. Luna, Luna winning best actress done. <laughs> Luna's winning best featured actor because there's no other. <laughs> no, Luna's Luna's boyfriend character is winning best feature actor. Oh my god! For the one scene and the half a song. <laughs> like I almost, I almost snuck like Zach in there because I was like, I have no. no picks. Honestly, wouldn't hate it. Right. Like what? Wouldn't hate it. Zach was Zach's dancing. I was legitimately shocked. I was like, Dear Evan Hansen can dance. <laughs> <laughs> Featured actor in a musical makes me mad that we don't have genderless categories. It's just, it's so lopsided between the featured actors and the featured actresses. Well, and not just featured. I mean, I would say that about leading too. The actress categories are much stronger than the actor categories this year. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Until we get to the plays and then it's the yes. opposite. I mean, what's what's hard <laughs> for me is that I feel like right now when things might change, like Ben Platt, I think is far and away the favorite for actor. Yeah. And I like, do think Ben's amazing in parade, but the idea that he will win and Michaela Diamond will not like infuriates me to my core. Like, and I get that's how it just works, <laughs> but that does like, I'm like, like, Oh, anyway, they should have a duo category. But why is the question, you know, why, why is that how it works? Should be Right. Right. We should have best duo duo, Tony, well, and I think once we once we do get to plays, um, I think that you know plays were a category that were was much harder for me, but much easier in terms of design because Life of Pi will get all of the design categories. Um, but those acting categories, especially the actress categories, I had trouble coming up with names. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of And the EGOT Goes To. Make sure you follow us on Twitter and Instagram at EGOT underscore podcast. And thanks to Jen from Jazz Tunes for our logo. See you next week.